Right guys, welcome to the video on major bones. Um, we're looking at the skeletal system. And the first thing we need to do is just to introduce you to the names of some of the key, uh, most important bones that you're gonna need to know uh, for anatomy and physiology. So here on the screen, we've got uh, a selection of bones of the upper body. Um, starting with the cranium, um, commonly called the skull, is made up of a, a group of bones, about 22 in total, um, of different sizes, but essentially all for the most part, flat bones that are fused together uh, to form a protective um, circle, uh, a protective dome around the brain in particular. Then moving down the body, the collarbone, uh, the proper name for the collarbone is the clavicle. And we have one on either side of the body. Um, and the clavicle along with uh, the scapula make up what we call the shoulder girdle. Um, all these bones have various different kinds of insertions for muscles, which we'll look at in a different video. Um, the breastbone, um, the bone that runs uh, down the middle uh, of the chest, is known as the sternum. Its proper name is the sternum. And it's into the sternum that the ribs and the rib cage um, insert, if you like, where they join in the middle, uh, linked with uh, little bits of cartilage that link the ribs into the sternum. Right down the centre of the body, uh, we have the vertebral column, uh, commonly called the spine, um, and we'll look at that in more detail in just a moment. Uh, the upper arm, the bone of the upper, upper arm is the humerus, um, and that's why it's sometimes known as the funny bone, because it's humerus. And then, of course, we've got, um, we've got the ribs too. Moving down the body, uh, in the hand, we have um, the large number of very small um, short bones that tend to be um, sort of cube shaped, roughly, vaguely cube shaped, um, which are known as the carpals. Um, between the carpals and the fingers, so the bones of the hand itself, um, we call those the metacarpals and they extend out of the carpals, hence the name metacarpals. And then down towards the fingers, we have phalanges. Uh, in the lower arm, there are two bones. Um, one called the ulna and one called the radius. Now the radius is the one that ends on the thumb side. So that's the best way to remember it because obviously you can turn your wrist around, but no matter which way you turn your hand, whether it's supinated or pronated, um, the radius will always be the bone that ends on the thumb side of the hand. Then we have uh, several bones um, that are categorized together here as the pelvis, um, again for protection uh, of reproductive organs uh, in particular, and then the longest and strongest uh, bone in the human body, uh, the thigh bone, which is called the femur, um, particularly um, problematic if you break the femur, it can lead to uh, um, a lot of damage. Um, and years ago, a break of the femur would be a, a very, very serious injury indeed. Uh, moving down the body, um, we've got the kneecaps. Um, the proper term for the kneecaps is the patella. Um, and these are embedded in tendons and just cover over the front of the knee itself uh, to protect the knee from damage um, because it's a fairly complex joint. Uh, further down, we've got the tibia and fibula. Now, it's very common to confuse these. Um, the tibia is the larger, thicker bone that carries the, the vast majority of the weight um, of the body um, and the fibula um, really just supports uh, the tibia, uh, enables some um, skeletal muscle attachment but doesn't do much in terms of weight bearing. So the tibia is the larger one and the fibula is the smaller one on the outside of the tibia. Then similar to the hands, um, lots of bones in the feet, um, ankle bones and the first uh, a few sort of cubic shaped bones and um, and similar to, to the hand to the bones of the uh, wrist, of course, uh, are, are called the tarsals. Then leading out from the tarsals, we have metatarsals, and then the last few um, thin, um, small bones that, that basically are the bones in the toes. These are called phalanges. Same name as the as the bones of the fingers. So we can classify um, the bones of the skeleton. Um, and there are 206 
bones of the skeleton for an adult actually slightly more uh, for babies uh, because some of their bones that we uh, classify as single bones are, are unfused um, when they're very young and particularly the coccyx and the sacrum which we'll talk about in a moment but we classify the bones of the skeleton into two um, categories um, so we can talk about the axial part of the skeleton and the appendicular part of the skeleton the axial part is the central column um, of the skeletal system um, and it, it's made up of, of approximately well it's made up of precisely 80 fused bones in adults um, 22 in the cranium um, auditory ossicles so three very very small bones in each ear the hyoid bone at the back of the throat 26 bones uh, in the vertebral column and then 24 ribs 12 on either side plus the sternum um, which we're classing as a single bone here to make up our 80 total um, bones in the axial skeleton these bones for the most part are fused that is um, they don't really have much movement between them and so it's very limited in terms of motion and the reason for that is their primary job is not movement their primary function is protection so the skull the cranium is protecting the brain the vertebral column is protecting the central nervous system um, and the ribs of course protecting uh, the lungs and the heart and some of the other internal organs that are in there so very much the axial skeleton that central part of the skeleton is um, it's not for movement it's not for motion um, and so uh, the bones are fused and in being fused they provide good protection for some of the critical organs that are beneath them so the appendicular skeleton um, like an appendix in a book which is added on to the end of a book the appendicular skeleton is the the, the part of the skeleton that the, the set of bones that is added on to the axial skeleton and it's added on so that you can move your axial skeleton around so we said already the axial skeleton doesn't have much movement the appendicular skeleton is the part of the skeleton that allows you to move around so in order for you to be able to move around these bones need to be unfused so they're not fused together like the cranium for example and um, they're unfused so that the muscles when the muscles pull on the bones can create movement in terms of the vertebral column itself um, we've said already um, that there are 26 bones of the vertebral column um, but these also have their own classifications or categories as well um, working down from the top uh, of the vertebral column to the bottom um, we have five sections um, three main sections um, are known as the cervical so that's the top seven bones the top seven vertebrae then we have 12 thoracic vertebrae uh, followed by five lumbar vertebrae so it goes cervical seven cervical vertebrae 12 thoracic vertebrae five lumbar vertebrae and in terms of classifying them um, if you were to go um, and god forbid you were to be injured and injure your spine and you were to go and find out what had gone wrong you could have a classification to tell you which of the vertebrae it was that you damaged and very simply starting from the top working down um, the bones are classified as C for cervical, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, because there are seven cervical vertebrae, and then T1, T2, T3, down to T12, and then L1, L2, and so on, down to L5. The most common um, bones of the vertebral column to damage are the top two, C1 and C2, and the bottom two. Um, l4 and l5 underneath the lumbar vertebrae we have um, some fused bones as i mentioned earlier babies um, when they're first born um, a lot a lot more bendy uh, than adults um, and basically that's because they're the five sacral or sacral bones and the four coccygeal um, or bones of the coccyx are not fused for babies they are fused later in life uh, so we attend we tend simply to talk about the sacrum or the sacrum and the coccyx as being bones in their own right so we have cervical thoracic and lumbar and then at the bottom of the spine the sacrum sacrum 
and coccyx. Finally, um, there are some postural deviations um, and I've just included a couple here for you to uh, think about. One is where we have an excessive curvature in the thoracic spine. So those 12 vertebrae that we've just thought about, where there is an excessive curvature there, um, we call that kyphosis. Kyphosis. And it can be caused um, with a, by a number of factors. It might be disease, arthritis. It could even be um, an indication of the presence of a tumour. Um, but also very commonly, it's a result of slouching. So good reason uh, to sit properly um, at work or at college. Um, the symptoms of kyphosis um, tend to be, because you can't see the spine itself, it's inside the person, so you have to look for symptoms that would indicate that the spine was curved, was, was kyphotic. Um, and the key symptoms, the key indicators are that the head tends to bend forwards um, to, kind of, to, to try and rebalance the body. Um, the back might hunch and also because of this change in um, in structure of the spine, the change in the centre of gravity, um, it tends to make your back hurt uh, and your legs uh, get fatigued. Down at the bottom of the spine where we have the lumbar region, if we get excessive curvature of the lumbar spine, we call that lordosis. So kyphosis is excessive curvature of the thoracic spine, lordosis, excessive curvature of the lumbar, lumbar spine. And it can be caused by osteoporosis, it can be caused by obesity, simply carrying a lot of weight, um, a lot of fat in particular, uh, that's heavy and, and basically just causes the spine to be, become deformed. Uh, and any kind of spinal injury, if you get um, different kinds of spinal injuries um, down in the lumbar region. Um, again, the symptoms are the things that would give away um, whether or not your spine was lordotic. Um, and you get symptoms like sway back, where the, the, the upper body sort of leans back to account for the curvature forwards of the lumbar spine. Again, back pain. And, an, and another indication is, is pronounced buttocks. So that is your, your backside sticks out. Um, and it does so to, to counteract the imbalance that's caused uh, by the excessive curvature in the lumbar region. I hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.